Welcome to Tea Time, my friends, a place where I muse about my gender transition experience and in the process aim to comfort and inspire others to a greater level of self-awareness. I am Artemis, and the idea for this video came after writing an analysis for a Defense Against the Dark Narcs video. For anyone not familiar with this series, link above to the playlist, I take certain viewer comments from my videos and break down what makes them abusive or illogical, in my opinion. I do this because they're examples of behavior that can chip away at health in everyday scenarios, and my hope is that by pointing them out, both perpetrators and sufferers alike can improve their lives. In many of my Dark Narcs videos, a common theme is that those with narcissistic tendencies really hate to be questioned, and hate to see others they identify with being questioned as well. They find it to be offensive and disrespectful. Part of this is due to the social practice of using questions as a weapon or a way to dismantle someone's credibility, a form of attack. As a child, an irate parent's questions of, what were you thinking, was almost always followed by punishment and the endless petty social media debates as an adult that open with a gotcha question have left many of us fearful of questioning. So, I can understand why many would simply place questioning in the category of disrespectful behavior. We associate disrespectful with behavior that hurts our feelings or offends our ego. Further, most of us have been taught to be respectful, whatever that actually is, so it seems to justify saying or thinking that questioning is therefore disrespectful. That way, we can experience less or none of it. In contrast, as I'm going to assert here, it's not the questioning that's disrespectful, it's the way it has been used, and I've come to believe again in the beauty of curious questioning. Quote, in the end, we will conserve only what we love, we will love only what we understand, and we will understand only what we are taught. Unquote. That quote was painted in a mural across the wall of one of the classrooms I used to teach in, and it has stuck with me through the years. In starting this channel, when I began my transition journey, from the beginning I aimed to be as transparent and open to questions as possible. I knew that I did not have all of the answers, and I knew there would be people who would find me repulsive. But I believed that I would learn more if I kept myself open to people and that others could learn something from me, even if I wasn't quite sure what that would be. Recently, a commenter was disgusted that I dared to question Elliot Page's assertion of being transgender, and I finally broke down in nitty-gritty detail why I believed it was important to do so. Sometimes I do this because it's an impromptu moment of inspiration that I am taking advantage of to write part of a script for a video that I feel needs published, and in this case, that was just that moment. And here's what I said. I believe that the problem is not the questioning. The problem is the spirit in which the questioning is performed. Intolerance to criticism leads to tyranny. The you cannot question me, instead you must accept who I am and what I want. I get why people today are having the reactions they are. Likely, generations long backlog of trauma having no tolerance for adversity or diversity because they're strung out from abuses. However, the answer I believe is not to do away with the challenges to their assertions. The challenges are there as checkpoints. I do not subscribe to the typical assumption of what is respectful, i.e. don't question someone's identity. I've come to understand much of that as ego-supporting and not in the spirit of learning and growth. I used to be part of that culture, but not anymore. Everyone is judged and criticized, not just those who are non-heteronormative. Everyone struggles with something. Transgender people are not more special than anyone else in this way just because they struggle with a certain kind of identity question. They occupy a potentially interesting corner of minorities, for sure, because they play with the most anciently assumed detail about our biology, which is our sex. Why, though, couldn't a transgender person show some empathy for a normative person being unsure about what to do with someone who falls outside of their genetically programmed expectations? Yes, humans as a species can display violent and terrible tendencies to things that are different from them. It's usually read as a threat on a deeply primitive level. 
But is that a reason to punish all humans by lacking empathy for those who are just afraid? How can they learn if they are not allowed to ask questions, even and especially offensive ones? How in the world can we, or whoever, begin to open people's minds about the binary in a sustainably compassionate way if we don't allow them the space to speak about their perceptions, feelings, and experiences? You don't much like it when people tell you to stuff your feelings and accept what they say, do you? I feel, think, believe that I am a pretty hardy individual now more than I ever have been because I don't have an allergy to someone disagreeing with me or questioning my labels or choices. I use those opportunities to welcome the curiosity because in curiosity, there is fertile ground for love and care. Remember the quote, in the end, we will conserve only what we love, we will love only what we understand, and we will understand only what we are taught. If the questioning leads to more introspection and a correction, all the better. Two minds are better than one, yes? If that questioning is discouraged all around, we lose opportunities to grow and potentially avoid disasters. And lest anyone think that I never struggled with feeling attacked by questioning, it took me many moons to get to the point now where I don't feel threatened by it. I spent many years studying psychological skills and healing my emotional injuries to keep from taking people's comments personally. It culminated after my ayahuasca retreat in 2022, link above if you want a video on that. And largely now my ego is no longer wrapped up in my identity, of course I still have one. I no longer see questions as a threat to my survival or worry about how I may be treated and therefore attempt to stifle others. Without constantly being weighed down by stress and trauma, I'm now able to keep the end goal in mind with each interaction to another. And that is to create as healthy an outcome as is possible for where that person may be. As a side note, my team and I are actually working on a book that details how I got to this point so that others can too, at the request of some of my viewers. And when I get closer to the completion of that project, there will be announcements. Today, I love when people ask me quote unquote offensive questions for many reasons. For one, if that individual is coming from a place of trying to upset me with the question, I can use it as an exercise in maintaining composure and empathizing with the possibility that some hurt people hurt other people. Those situations are great practice in learning not to engage just because the ego wants to be right. Another golden phrase comes to mind here. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Of course you can be both, but applied here, I mean it as a reminder simply to walk away from would-be arguments with people who, because of the way they approached you, are communicating that they are choosing war and not harmony. For someone demonstrating curiosity, and therefore a potentially much more harmonious interaction, if they're brave enough to ask the question, it may mean that I have created a comfortable enough, trusted space to do so, and this is encouraging to me. One of the first rules in rehabilitation of traumatized humans or animals is to create a space where they feel safe and can come out of the stressed fight-flight-freeze state. Questions stemming from true curiosity only come about when someone is relaxed enough because the body and brain shut down all non-essential tasks when survival is the priority, as it is in highly stressed states. In my opinion, to be able to host a space where someone can explore is sacred. And speaking of exploring, I love offensive questions because there's always the potential that I can learn more about myself and others from a place I could not see or consider on my own. I've noticed that people can feel offended if it is suggested to them that they do not know themselves in some area as well as they think they do. That comment has shown up on Elliot's video too. Something to the effect of, how dare you think that you could know Elliot more than he knows himself? And while I don't claim to know anyone on that level, and never would, I believe that many people do not know themselves as well as they think, or else things like picking the wrong person to marry, midlife crisis, some unplanned pregnancies, or completely changing careers would occur less. Even athletes watch video recordings of themselves to catch things in their technique that they are not able to see going on with their own bodies so that they can improve. 
So why not appreciate questions and eyeballs from others noticing things about your life that perhaps you do not? It may not all be great insight or advice, but that's where your discernment and logic comes in. Without an ego in the way, worrying about being wrong and how that makes you look, you can let in useful information. Easier said than done, perhaps, I realize. On that note, offensive questions welcome, and until next time, my friends, cheers.